I'm Barry Godin and welcome back to BG Tips, episode three. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about bike clothes and the spare clothes I take on a trip. So if you saw the kit list video before, we're gonna break down each of those categories into individual videos and go into a bit more in depth. Before I go any further today, I'd just like to mention uh, for the past few years, I have been a Gore brand ambassador, which means Gore clothing will be featured in this video. They don't pay me, they don't make me do anything, but they do give me free clothing. So I do have to mention that before we start. So starting off, what's the first thing on my list? You can't leave home on a bike trip without a helmet. This is a Gyro Montaro. It's a mountain bike helmet, which does give me a little bit more coverage around the back. Um, but generally the main thing about it, it's got a peak. Why do you want a peak on a helmet? Well, it generally doesn't stop much sun because we don't see much of that on my trips, but it does stop the rain. It stops mud flowing into my eyes. Um, you, if it is a low sun, you can bring the peak down, which is quite interesting. You can move it up. Uh, but the major reason I wear it, because if you go for a forest and there's a branch, it's gonna heat the peak before it hits you. So it's a bit more frontal protection in those forests. It does have a technology called MIPS inside it, which is multi-directional impact system. All it does is acts like the fluid inside your head. So if you crash, it's gonna slip before anything else does. Um, it's been a real comfortable helmet. Generally you'll find the more money you spend, the better fit it's going to be. You're gonna find that also the more of the polystyrene type material is all wrapped up and it has a better retention system. And the best thing about this is the padding. This padding soaks up to 10 times its weight in moisture. I need it. <laughs> I also find that it kind of funnels itself away from my eyes. So it doesn't go pouring into my eyes. Another reason why I won't go riding without a helmet. Coming next on my list is bike shoes. I apologize, these ones are a bit dirty. They have seen too many adventures and a bit worn out. Um, these were a specialized rhyme. Uh, which I'm waiting for the new version to come out so I can buy them, but I have lost uh, quite a lot of soul. These ones here, these are clip pedal shoes or clipless. Why are they called clipless? It's because the old fashioned metal thing that used to run the front was called a clip. So when they took that off, it's called clipless, but nowadays it makes no sense at all. So I use them with SBD trail pedals. These give a clip system, but a slightly bigger platform around it, which means I'm clipped in, I can push down nice and comfortable. Why clip in versus flat pedals? Scientifically, when you pull up, you physically use 50% more muscle than pushing down, which genuinely means though, your legs are more balanced, so you can keep a faster spin, and it's genuinely more comfortable. But lots and lots of people use flat pedals. If you use flat pedals with really, really big pins and good grip, you're gonna get near enough this same technology in there. It does mean when you get off the bike and you climb up mountains, you can be a lot more comfortable and a bit grippier. I've climbed many a mountains in these, as you can tell. Uh, this has got a Vibram sole around it, which means there's lots of grip. But I tell you what, you hit the metal cleat system when the wet rock and you're gonna fall over. Um, do be aware of it. But I, I'm, a, I'm a changed rider. I can ride very, very technical descents clipped in. Uh, even on my mountain bike, so I'm now converted, so I won't be going back. Just wipe up a bit more Scotland. <laughs> so whilst we're talking about shoes, I thought we'd stay with footwear. And we're gonna talk about socks, and we're gonna talk about trying to keep your feet dry. So sock-wise, I now believe in having cold, wet feet, very sadly. I've tried every option out there, waterproof socks, overshoes with trousers, uh, you name it, I'm gonna have wet feet. I ride through too many puddles, cross too many rivers. Um, I've just come to terms with it. I crossed Iceland with just these socks and um, yes, I had cold feet and they went a little bit wrinkly at the bottom. Many people recommended talcum powder, putting certain creams on there. So I've had lots of top tips, which I have tried. But the biggest thing I must say, next to the skin, try and get something that's merino wool. Merino wool, we're gonna talk about a lot today. It's the best natural fiber out there. It's from the merino sheep but it's antibacterial, it's the best wicking material out there, and also it doesn't smell that bad after a few days. So it's kind of odorless, so amazing, amazing material. The, the key feature with your socks and the rest of your clothing, it dries incredibly quickly. So if you've had wet feet, hopefully it's gonna dry in the next few hours. 
And um, yeah, I've never looked back. So top tip for your feet. In terms of keeping your feet dry though, uh, it wasn't until last August that I tried another product I had given up for a while. But I had these by Gore, they're Gore-Tex socks, which is really extreme. I think they're like a hundred pounds, but they're probably the closest thing I've got to having dry feet. You've got a hole. You have to put your foot inside them, which means you're gonna have water going in. But these are pretty tight and my feet were pretty toasty, I have to say. Were damp, but not horrendous. The only thing I will say about this over and over shoe is the next morning, when I went to put my foot in my wet shoes, because my shoes were still wet, if these had dried off, I had dry feet. That feeling of putting a, a nice, clean, dry sock into a wet shoe at the beginning of the day is the most repulsive thing in the world. The other repulsive thing in the world is putting wet lycra on in the morning. So do try and keep yourself dry. Being a damp, wet tent, especially if you camped in a river, is not very easy. But yeah, the biggest thing, keep your body dry and keep it clean. So the next subject we're gonna talk about is clothing in general. There is no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. And I didn't come up with that phrase. But the whole thing about it is to go into the free layering system. If you follow this, you're gonna stay warm and dry for as long as possible. So first of all, we have the base layer. This is the layer that goes next to the skin. This is to keep your body dry. So it's got to be quite tight. It's got to wick away that moisture from your skin. Why do we sweat? We sweat because your body's trying to get cool. Because you're producing heat, it wants to cool yourself down. So you sweat into your little hairs, the wind blows it off and that cools down the skin. So if you want to keep your body dry and not getting cold, you need to take that moisture away from the skin with it sitting on there. If you wear cotton, anything cotton anywhere near the body, cotton grabs the moisture, hangs onto it for dear life, and will never let go of it. And you'll get very cold and very damp and very, very uncomfortable. So any man-made material would do. The best material you can use though is merino wool. And again, for all those properties we said earlier, I use all these casual merino wool t-shirts, which have thumb patterns on them, um, and they dry really, really quickly. So by the next morning, if I've had a soaking wet t-shirt, it will dry. And also if the sun ever comes out, I should remain quite dry. Fun patterns include a bear holding a caravan. <laughs> if it's winter though, I will wear something a little bit warmer. So this has a bit more thermal properties to it. It still acts like a base layer, but it keeps my body just that little bit warmer but still doing the properties of a base cloud, wicking away that moisture. Working our way down the body, next is gonna be talking about Lycra. Oh yeah. So Lycra is all to do with the padding inside. Get a decent padding. Don't buy cheap padding, please. If you go into a shop, give it a push. Fill a cheap one and you feel there's not much support. Fill a more expensive one and you notice it's, there's a lot more support there's different layers in it, and it's a lot more ergonomic as well in terms of where it sits on your body. If you're a woman, do buy women Pacific Lycra. And if you're a man, buy male Pacific Lycra. We have different bodies and they are different fits. So please do buy the right one. As you spend more money as well, what can be more exciting about Lycra? You get a lot of flat lock stitching, which means it's not so rough around your um, parts. It's not gonna itch and scratch. And generally you find different antibacterial pads as well. I'm not a bib convert. I use a Lycra short. This means I can go to the loo quickly. It's a lot more comfortable. I personally feel more normal. Um, lots of people use bib shorts. The reason why you use bib shorts is because this padding, you don't want moving around. You wanna be sat in one place all day long. So that means bib shorts is gonna stay in one place you can ride for further and longer with less discomfort. I've still used a short because it just is more practical in terms of bike packing. All year round, I use a Lycra short. I don't use three quarters and I don't use leggings, but I do use a knee warmer. I pretty much wear knee warmers three quarters of the year unless it's that hot, I can't wear them. They basically extend your short and cover up the knees. 
I find a lot of these are windproof and if I have cold going to my knees all morning long, I get that creaky knee feeling. So I found that that resolves it for me. You do feel like you're putting on tights in the morning, but they have a huge elastic band there. And the idea of that, you put these on first and then you roll your Lycra your shorts down around them as well. And that stops them slipping. I find riding, they never slip, but I do find walking and hiking up a mountain, they'll end up down my ankles. Uh, so there's a bit of readjustment, so a bit of a pain, but if you think, if it gets that hot and you've got arm warmers and leg warmers, you can just whip these off and you're back to your shorts. And they're super small, much better than taking a full set of leggings. Next, we're gonna talk about mid layers and outer layers. The idea about the mid layer is it generates that little bit more warmth. So just to recap, the base layer keeps your body dry. That's to wick away the moisture from the body. The mid layer is that extra warmth layer, but the most important and the one that's now blurred in the last few years and your mid and outer is kind of joined together, the outer layer stops the elements coming in. That stops the rain, which is the most obvious one, but the key one is for a cyclist, wind. If you can stop the wind coming to your body, especially the core area, that's gonna stop your body getting cold because you sweat and the wind blows off to cool yourself down. So if you can produce some windproof layers on top of you, you're gonna stay really, really comfortable and dry. All these layers have to work in sync. If you put on an expensive outer layer and you put on a cotton t-shirt on the inside, all that moisture can't pass through the layers. So you're gonna get very hot and sweaty and clammy on the inside. So the whole layering system has to work in partnership. So make sure you wear something technical underneath and then something breathable on the outside and all that moisture will eventually wick away from your body, keeping you warm and dry on the inside. First, we're gonna talk about a baggy short. Yes, I'm a man who doesn't ride around in just Lycra. No one wants to see that personally. So I do wear a baggy short, but key, key things for a filmmaker, it's got pockets. You try and go to the shop and put your wallet in your hand and try and grab that pasty and the banana and the apple and you're walking out the shop like this. So you've got pockets, which makes things so much easier. You're not gonna lose your phone. You're not gonna lose your wallet. Yes, they're in my bike packing bag, but as soon as I get off, they go straight in my pockets and off I go enjoy myself. The other thing is, it's a bit more protection. If you go down hard, especially off-road or on the road is probably worse, this is gonna have that extra layer of protection between you and lovely gravel rash. So I am a baggy convert. But staying with the shorts, a lot of my trips it's raining. And even if it has just rained, I'll be in a waterproof short. If you got water flying up and making that lycra pad wet, things go horribly wrong. So I do find myself 90% of the time wearing a waterproof short. These are very, very lightweight, very, very comfortable. They do sound like a crisp packet. So you have to get used to that noise. And the other negative is I find this bit here where my knees are, and that does rub away my knees. So I normally partnership these up with the knee warmer, which means you can slide over and be very, very happy. But I have drawn blood, so I do recommend wearing a knee warmer or something like that when you're using a waterproof short. I use waterproof shorts because I feel more flexible. I feel like a normal mountain biker. And you read in Iceland, in depths of whatever temperature it was, we're still wearing shorts and we're very, very comfortable. Um, my shins don't normally get cold. So yes, I'm a waterproof short man. So now I'm talking about the top half of the body and when it's a little bit nicer weather, but there's still quite a chilly wind. You've got to protect your core of your body. If your core gets cold, you can get into trouble. Your extremities can genuinely deal with it and recover, but your core is one you want to keep protected. So this is a windproof sleeveless top, a gilet. And what this does, it just protects that core. You can still kind of get a bit cool from your body, but this stops your core getting cold. So a real essential top to have thrown in the bottom of your bag. Next is my favorite top of all time. This is incredible. I don't go anywhere without it. It's purely super lightweight. It's just the windstopper membrane. This is amazing. It's got arms, it's got a hood. A hood is real key at the top of a mountain. If you wanna whip it up, get a little bit more protection. Also protects the back of your neck quite nicely as well at times. This 
I love to bits. It breathes so well. It can be quite a warm day and I'm protected. Generally though, you'll find when you climb, you get a little bit warm. And as soon as you descend, you get a little bit cold. So instead of taking layers on and off, on and off, on and off all day long, you just stick this on and keep it on all day long. When you descend though, at the top of the mountain, make sure you do put something windproof on. Generally, hopefully your descent, you're gonna go fast. When you go fast, that's more wind. That's gonna get your body even colder. And when you don't wanna stop halfway down the descent and realize your body's cold and you can't recover from it. So if you are at the top of a mountain, do stick one of these on before you go down. Now we're gonna talk about waterproof layers. This is Gore's fanciest waterproof layer they've ever made. This is purely just the Gore-Tex membrane. So it's incredibly light and folds up incredibly small. It's guaranteed to keep you dry. Water cannot pass through this material. It's incredibly thin, which means it's incredibly light and probably the most breathable waterproof jacket out there. It's really, really nice because it folds down super small. So if it's a nice week, I'll always take this with me and maybe none of the other outer layers because this will act as a wind stopper, because it breathes so well, and my waterproof layer. It was so small, it just stuffs in one of my little saddlebags, and it's really, really comfortable. It is, though, incredibly fragile. You go anywhere near a branch or a fawn with this jacket, it's gonna rip. Also, if you're wearing a backpack, it's gonna rub and wear itself through. So for those occasions, I'll wear something a little bit thicker. This has a protective outer layer on top of the Gore-Tex membrane, but it's still as breathable, still as comfortable, has a hood. Genuinely when I'm wearing a backpack or my bike on my back, you'll find me in this jacket. And if I know it's gonna be wet or weak, it's a bit more comfortable, a bit more solid, and you feel a bit more um, cozy inside it. Now we're down to hands. And on my hands, I always wear a four finger glove. This is mainly about protection than anything else. If you crash, and scrape your hands along the ground, you're not gonna be riding anywhere without a lot of pain. Also, I'm a little bit sweaty and your handlebars can get a little bit slippery. So this offer a lot more grip on the handlebars and you stop your slippery seal and then um, falling off the grips and crashing. The other thing about the sweatness as well, which we don't wanna talk about, but we will, is to have a lovely sweat place here. So you can do that and it means you're not gonna get that sweat all over your hands and it's all horrible, so you can wipe yourself down. Gloves also work in the free layering system. So first of all, these are really, really airy, so I'll use them on a summer's day. Next is gonna be a thin but windproof gloves. The fact they're windproof, that's gonna stop the wind getting to your hands and making them cold. They're, but they're not so bulky, you can still feel the handlebars. So a lot of spring days and <laughs> I've got holes in my thumbs, um, you'll find me in these gloves, obviously wearing them far too much. If it's raining, I'll go to a waterproof glove. The idea about these is they keep your hands dry, but they have a little bit more of a thermal property in them. You also notice how long the cuff is. That means that when it's inside my jacket, I can strap it in and it stops that water leaking into my hands. But I'm generally more warm than dry inside these, but yeah, really, really toasty. They apparently still work with your phone. I normally use my nose <laughs> in the weather um, because my hands aren't warm enough, but yeah, they offer stay with that same protection. If these aren't warm enough, I'll couple them up with a merino or liner. The idea of a liner inside your gloves is it means you're trapping air twice. So the idea is you want your gloves not so tight that there's no room in there. You need a little bit of room at the end of the fingertips to have a pocket of air. That pocket of air is what heats up. If you've got them so tight, there's no air gap in them, because you don't like slipping on the handlebars, you're gonna get cold hands and especially cold fingertips. Yes, you're gonna get cold hands, so it's those finger exercises on the handlebars are the best way of not getting cold hands. <laughs> so that's a list of my bike clothes. This is my spare clothes bag. In here is what I'll take as my spares. They're in a dry bag. You want them to be dry. Lots of people, this is probably where you can cut down the most weight, I'd say. But I will generally take, depending on the length of the trip, probably for about a week, I'll take two spare merino wool tops. I'll be wearing one, one will be the next one I'll be wearing, so I'll alternate between the two. 
And the third one is backup. So you'll notice everything's in pairs of two here. I'll be wearing the third. I always want a backup because if something goes horribly wrong, I want something to keep me warm and dry. So with my two Merino all tops, I'll have two sets of Lycra. And again, one's a backup, so I never use it until the last day as that luxury moment. And the other one's the ultimate one I alternate between. Having that moment where you can put fresh Lycra on is amazing day. So always save one. If you're feeling really, really low, go down to the bottom of your bag and put them on. It'll make your day and make you keep getting through that adventure. Around my bike, you'll also find socks everywhere. That wet sock thing in the morning is horrific. And also if you can't get dry feet in the evenings, which we'll talk about evening clothes in another video, you wanna have a spare pair of dry socks at all time until the last day. Even on the last day, if you're gonna get the train home, especially a sleeper train for 12 hours, and you can put dry socks on for the way home, you're not gonna have such manky feet by the time you get there. So yeah, <laughs> socks everywhere. Stuff them in every, every bag. <laughs> and the last thing on my list is a buff. A buff is purely a brand who started making tubes of material. They're incredibly versatile. You'll also notice this one's a little bit shorter. This is Marina Marino wall, which means I cut it in half. So I'll run one down here. I'll run the other one there. So I'm protected. I can still see where I'm going, but these are amazing. You can do whatever you want with them. You can make balaclavas. I have been in times when I've done this. I look like an old woman. Nothing about that, but it's not the best look. So I do recommend carrying a few of these around your bike. They can get you out of trouble. They can get a friend out of trouble. If you have long hair, which I don't, you can use them as a hairband. I'm not, I don't, I don't sell these, but you can't have enough of these um, schnoods or whatever you want to call them inside your bike. And if you can get the Merino wall ones, you now know all the properties of Merino wall. So you're going to go out and buy one. So that is everything to do with clothing. I'm just going to reiterate the free layering system, your base layer, your mid layer, your outer layer. Your base layer keeps your body dry and keeps that moisture coming away from it. The mid layer is the one that projects a little bit of warmth and the outer layer stops the elements getting to you, especially the wind. As soon as wind gets to your body, you're gonna get it cold really, really quickly. So thank you for watching, happy adventuring, and until next video, ciao for now. Um.